October 16th, 1665. Lord, how empty the streets are and melancholy. So many poor sick people in the streets full of sores and so many sad stories overheard as I walk. Everybody talking of this dead and that man sick and so many in this place and so many in that. And they tell me that in Westminster there is never a physician, and but one apothecary left, all being dead, but that there are great hopes of a great decrease this week. God send it. That from the Diary of Samuel Pepys about the Plague of London, our topic this week, Plague Doctors, in perfect time for this season. And by that, I don't mean Halloween. I mean to say influenza season which I'm given to understand officially commences around the time that school resumes. Children are packed together in an enclosed space and put things in their mouth and come home and share diseases with their families and continues through the cold months as our immune systems are diminished. The Yersinia pestis bacteria is a particularly virulent one that ravaged the globe actually at several points in history, for the purposes of this video, we are primarily going to focus on the one that occurred in the 1600s, commonly known as the Black Death or the Bubonic Plague. It killed off a good portion of the world's population, and cities would hire these plague doctors to go and minister to rich and poor in their town who were afflicted by the plague. This didn't tend to be the work of the good doctors. This was more the young and inexperienced ones and the ones that were in disrepute. And they would chiefly give end-of-life care and take care of the bodies. In the early 1600s, they came up with an outfit for the plague doctors, and they would carry a stick by which they would examine the plague victims. They knew enough not to touch the plague victim or they would catch it and they would wear these black robes that were waxed, and they had these masks that had goggles with sort of a ventilated eye hole and a beak, which would be filled with hay and herbs, in hopes to keep the miasma of the disease away from the plague doctor, which of course isn't how it works, but they had this miasmatic understanding of disease at the time, which when you think about it is not all that different from our current understanding of disease, but lacks one key element, that of cross-contamination. They knew enough not to touch the plague victim, but the plague doctor might get home and after a long day and take off his robe and put his stick down, touching the stick on a place that he had used to examine a sore on one of the plague victims earlier in the day and the plague doctor would be dead within a couple of days. This happened all the time. It was a very high turnover job, and people went nuts. People didn't know how to deal with this. They thought it was the end of the world, literally. They thought this was the final days, and some people behaved very immorally, and some people blamed certain groups for the rise of the plague, which, of course, were all false. Some people blamed the Jews in Germany and a few other places and other groups in other parts of Europe that tended to always be the groups that were unpopular already in that place. I think about the way that people dealt with the plague, the sort of psychic damage that went on, and how it all went down. And I feel as if we have an illusion of safety today, this sort of unreasonable expectation that with our enlightened age of medicine and our understanding of disease that this sort of thing can't happen again, which of course is nonsense. In 1917, there was a flu pandemic that spread around the world and killed over 20 million people. You would hear these stories of people who were in perfectly good health getting on a train and being dead before they arrived at their destination. I don't know if you know this, but in 1900, there was an outbreak of the bubonic plague in San Francisco because of ships with rats with fleas on them, much like the earlier Black Death. In my own lifetime, there's been the plague of HIV, which in first world countries is not exactly what it was 25 years ago, because if you're fortunate enough to be able to afford medical care, we have drugs now that make that disease not so much of a death sentence as it was. 
you can take drugs that will allow you to live a long and reasonably healthy life. But this is not true for most of the rest of the world. It kills millions upon millions of people still. And you may remember a couple of years ago, a fear of a pandemic of a certain strain of influenza, the H1N1, also known as the swine flu. And this occurred because every year the CDC is very good about tracking strains of influenza and they create a yearly influenza vaccine, which is the three strains of influenza that they determine are going to be the dominant ones that season. And they put a killed version in the vaccine and inoculate people with that. That particular year, they had created the vaccine and distributed it and this other strain, this H1N1, suddenly rose to dominance totally unexpectedly. You'll notice that this doesn't happen very often, but it did happen and it could happen again. I look at the lessons of the plague and I feel as if we would all do well to keep death right here, right in front of us, because essentially it is. You don't know when it's going to happen, and you don't know what's coming. So often it is not when you expect it to be. You may get on a train and not be alive when you get off of it. I, I read a story earlier today that Charles Bukowski told in a letter to his one of his patrons. In a time earlier in his life when he was working in a factory and they were sitting in the break room, and he said to his co-workers, do you realize that at any time, in fact, right now, the boss could walk in and lay all of us off. This made his co-workers very uncomfortable, understandably. People don't like to think about that. And this isn't exactly the sort of conversation that Dale Carnegie would condone. But there's a truth to it. And there is also a truth to it in our everyday lives. The boss could lay us off at any time. That's about all I have to say about Plague Doctors. I was going to make a Plague Doctor mask for this video to show all of you, but time precluded me finishing it in time for this video. So I think that next week, in time uh, apropos for Halloween, I am going to make a how-to video on how to make a Plague Doctor mask. So be sure to join me next week for that. I'm sure it will be fun. And in the meantime, get your flu shot if you haven't. <laughs>